Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am excited. Today I'm doing a video that it was actually requested of me. And it's because I have mentioned in previous videos how I deal um, successfully with fungus gnats. So I just want to show you guys the what I do and in general what I do for pest control in my home. So... If that's something that you're interested in, this is definitely going to be a, a really good chunk of information. Um, wow. I just said it like that. Information. <laughs> so I did create some notes because there is a lot to honestly talk about when it comes to pest control. I do want to, you know, give a disclosure. This is something that works for me. I do live in Florida. My climate is you know, during the summer, extremely humid. During the winter, just humid. <laughs> so, you know, when I do give this information and when I do give those tips and what I'm, what I do for myself, just keep that in the back of your head. Um, but I think for the most part, it's going to work for others. So, and, and it's just lessons I have learned in the last few years. So, um, let's just get started. Okay. <laughs> So on this video, I wanted to touch on what has worked for me, what hasn't, and what I learned over time. So the first thing that I wanted to go over, because I ended up, you know, making notes about it, is pretty much, you know when everyone says, um, bring home a healthy plant? Absolutely. But there's more to it than that. When it comes to pest control, you have to think about the plant and the environment that you're gonna put it in. Because these plants are coming from elsewhere, outdoors, greenhouses. So you have to think you're gonna have it indoors. Does it have adequate lighting? What kind of moisture does it need? What kind of substrate will be more most beneficial for it? You know, there's all these different little things that come with not just learning about the plant, but how can you recreate that in your home? So when you're looking at a plant, you know, does it have succulent leaves? Is it thin leaves? Is it, you know, so in, in general, don't just learn, you know, lighting and watering learn more, you know, figure out what that plant needs. If you guys hear that, that's Bell. Um, so learn what that plant needs and, and also try to supplement it because key to it all, it's try to avoid the plant being stressed because the stress does have a big impact in what kind of pest you're going to deal with. And I'm going to explain myself for that. So for example, when you over fertilize a plant, you will see more times than not aphids. And goodness gracious, I, I learned that lesson because I was, I ended up over fertilizing my plants that were in LECA and they were suffering from aphids. Um, then what I did honestly is that I flushed them, I swapped the LECA, I flushed the, the plant and I ended up just watering with simple water in the next few waterings. And I also sprayed the plant and it helped tremendously. Um, and I'll go over the, the pest control items that I have used over time that I'm still using. But when it comes, you know, I'm not talking about aphids and things like that. I want to focus on fungus gnats because to me that that is so simple in comparison to the other ones, to be honest. But anyhow, so the over -fer -fer fertilizing does bring aphids. So keep that in mind. That's lesson number one. And also when you over and under water, you stress the plants, you start seeing, oh my gosh, you start seeing aphids, you start seeing, you know, spider mites, you start seeing the whole shenanigan and overwatering does bring fungus gnats. So what has worked for me um, over time is keeping the plants on a schedule. I know that not many people can do that. And I know that it's hard to have plants on a schedule when they're all different species. You can't 
think that you're going to give the same care to a begonia that you're going to give to a cactus. And that's understandable. Every single week, I have a different amount of plants to water. But I do love that. And there's certain plants that depending if the planter is smaller, I do have to like sprinkle a little bit of water here and there if they're on, um, on sphagnum. But it's not like a bother or anything like that. And so when it comes to fungus gnats, I have learned, you know, several lessons. But one thing that I, I did notice in general is keeping clean area around the plants is great. When plants are not grouped together, bugs do crawl and walk <laughs> to the next plant. And I'll insert a clip because there was a, a, you know, a thrip that was going, you know, towards a different plant and it was walking on my Ikea cabinet. And because it was white, you know, I see that there's some dust and whatever, but that's why I'm kind of like a freak now about vacuuming every day, every other day. And it's so fast and it's easier to maintain than to have to like clean this mess but you know maintain your area clean if you are already having or suffering from an infestation swab the top inch of soil with fresh soil if you're able to begin to underwater during the time that your plant is suffering from that underwater i can't express that enough it saves time is one and two, it just, it helps because the the water table will be much lower than the fungus gnats like to be in. Um, one thing that I noticed is when I started fighting my fungus gnats, I was like feeling like it wasn't working. It was, it was just kind of bizarre. And I was thinking, okay, at this point, they're not coming from my plants. What is happening in my home that... You know, this gnats, I, I'm not, I'm losing the battle and it's not the norm. So I did notice that I had a bag of soil that came in and it was slightly open and the soil was so moist that the fungus gnat had a nest in there. So I did take the bag out and it was like night and day. So in other words, check your surroundings. Is there something that could attract them aside from your plants? You know, just keep that in mind. I think cleanliness is such a top priority for when it comes to the plants, aside from keeping them on a schedule. And another thing that I do to help me in general with pests is grouping. If I know that a plant tends to have issues with spider mites or thrips or whatever, I tend to place it next to a plant that is susceptible to pests because it will be harder for the pest to just kind of spread out. So be very mindful on the grouping that you do for your plants. I think that's incredible and it has helped me so much to save my collection because I love my collection to pieces and, you know, there's plants that I, you know, constantly am fighting, you know, either thrips or, or spider mites or whatever. I no longer fight aphids, thankfully. <laughs> And honestly, when it comes to like mealybugs, um, you know, I do find it a little bit easier to deal with that type of pest. It's still a, a nightmare, but so let me just kind of show you what I actually do in general. So when it comes to the, the mealybugs, for example, I do grab alcohol and I do grab like... I know a lot of people say 50-50 or whatever. I actually grab the alcohol, solely the alcohol, and I spray the plant down to the point that it's dripping to deal with the mealybugs. And once they're killed and dead and whatever, I flush the plant. If I have extra soil and whatnot, I do, you know, swap the soil. But if some, many times I don't do that. That's like an extra thing. And because of their life cycle, I do soak the plant like maybe once a week with alcohol. And then after that, I, I kind of like keep an eye on it 
because it could be two, three weeks, depending on the type of infestation. But honestly, with the mealybugs, all I use is alcohol, and I love that. And so far, it's just something that has worked for me. Um, when it comes to, like, aphids and spider mites, I there's a couple things that I used. Um, so I do use this Thrain 1. Um, in, uh, it's called Bio Advance. And so it does say that it's for... Let's see. It says it's for be beetles, aphids, spider mites, and other listed pests. But when I have, like, when I'm battling thrips, which to me, thrips are the worst, <laughs> um, and spider mites, I do end up mixing this with um, with a little bit of um, castile, castile soap in a spray bottle, you know, with water. And it's just a little bit, like maybe like a capful of it. And I actually have that handy and I spray the plant absolutely down and I keep it in the sink for maybe a couple hours. Then I spray it again. And then after that, you know, I rinse the plant and spray it lightly and then leave it until like about 10 days later. Um, because I believe the cycle is about 11 days, but don't quote me on that. I, I read about it a long time ago. So another thing that I use this for that has been, that's been duly, that it has been amazing for is my, my Hoyas. So some of my Hoyas had gotten scale. So when it comes to this, this is magic for scale. So I spray this on my Hoyas and cactus that suffer from scale. And what I do is I spray it down. I do not add the castile soap on that. I do the correct measurement that advises you of. And I let it soak up. I grab a little brush, like a brow brush. And I scrape the hell out of the, out of, out of the, the plant gently. <laughs> and then I spray it again. I'll see if there's anything left. And honestly, after that, any scale you see will be dead. Like, that's the easiest way for me to deal with scale. Because in the beginning of winter, a lot of my Hoyas and cactus do get scale for some reason. So, but I, I deal with it and it honestly feels really awesome and I do if they're in Leka I do remove all the Leka I check the roots all that but goodness gracious like this has been a lifesaver for um scale for sure and it does help tremendously you know with with thrips I do feel like with thrips it's a never-ending battle um because you know not only do they jump do they crawl do they go to another plant so i i feel like it's something that you have to always keep on top of um but anyhow when it comes to um you know thrips another thing that i have used is systemic houseplant pest control and i honestly I hate to say it, but I feel like this is like garbage. I know that a lot of people use it and it says that it's for, you know, aphids, white flies and other listed insects. But I put this on my soil. I have put, I have sprinkled it. I have put it on top of the soil. I have like, you know, smooshed it around. I have just put it on my mix and I still have pests on the plant that I have used this on. So to me, I honestly don't feel like I'm going to buy it again, if that makes sense. Um, I just feel like it's it was a waste of money for me. I don't know. I don't know. If you buy it and it's like great for you, great. But to me, this was a waste of money. Um, and yeah, to me, that was a waste of money. When it comes to the neem oil... <laughs> The only way that I like using the neem oil, because I do feel like neem oil is another useless item. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know that many of you probably love neem oil, but the only thing that I use the neem oil for is 
to honestly clean the leaves. I do love cleaning the leaves with castile soap and neem oil solution um, with a lot of, you know, like let's say 32 ounces of water, a cap of this and a cap of that, and that's what I do to clean the leaves. And I do feel like that helps, you know, to one, for the pest not to want to come to the plant, but two, it does maintain them cleaner for longer. Do I think the neem oil, like, I don't think the neem oil helps with pests <laughs> in the magnitude that I need it to. Um, but I do use it to clean the leaves and it does help. Like if you have, for example, like spider mites and things like that, they do tend to avoid because of the odor, because of, you know, the how it feels on them. Um, you know, it, it it's beneficial, but I wouldn't say this kills everything. I just use it for cleaning my leaves. And every so often, I do feel like I just want to go and clean like all my leaves and whatever. And so I definitely use the neem oil for that. But I don't necessarily use it for top pest control. Top pest control for everything aside from the nuts will be this one. This one, it is honestly my favorite. And it's supposed to last up to three months, but I do, when I am suffering from, you know, any sort of pest, I use it once a week or every other week until the problem is resolved. But this so far is my favorite for any sort of pest and alcohol for the mealybugs. So far, those are my favorite. When it comes to the, the gnats, to me, that's an interesting one. Because what I do, aside from using, you know, carnivorous plants, so this one is a sundew. Let's see if you can. So this one's a sundew, and it has fungus gnats in it. So I do love that. And I do have um, also butterworts. Oh, look. She has beans. Oh my gosh, that's so flipping cute. I had not noticed. I have a bunch at home, but so I want to say three weeks ago to a month, I ended up doing a lot of propagations of my carnivorous plants and I didn't have gnats. And I was a little concerned that because during their young, young age, you know, you can fertilize them and they needed food. And it's not like I can kill mosquitoes or anything, go outside and kill stuff because it's just not logical. So I decided to overwater my plants to get fungus gnats in the home because I wasn't, I was being very um, successful in not having them because of a regimen that I'll explain shortly. So as you can see, I was successful by, you know, of course, over watering the plants and I ended up getting the biggest infestation. When I first began my plant journey, I purchased beneficial insects, which I didn't like. Um, I ended up getting like the sticky traps, which I don't like. I ended up purchasing neem oil. I ended up purchasing, you know, all these different things. I ended up purchasing mosquito bits, you name it, and I purchased it. And it was just something that it felt like, when you have fungus gnats, it's so annoying. They get on your drinks, they just, if you're in the middle of the night, you know, watching your phone or your, you know, laptop or whatever, they're like bugging. Um, it's embarrassing when you have company. Like when you have an infestation, it's a nightmare. And even though they're not harmful for the plants, it's embarrassing. It looks bad. And I know that it's part of being a plant parent, but I figured that something had to give, something, I had to do something that was going to work for me. And I actually did find something that worked for me. I had used everything 
and you know the the sticky traps they do work for the adult ones but it doesn't work for um you know the larva the carnivorous plants that's for the adults they don't deal with the larva so when it comes to fungus gnats you know what i'm trying to say is tackle the larva fight the larva so when it comes to mosquito bits you know if you use it in the regular fashion it doesn't work and i could not understand why putting it in the soil sprinkling on top sprinkling on top and swapping the soil and then watering it it just wasn't working so i decided you know what let's try something different i know that that's the way that it's recommended to be used to just be sprinkled on it is it <laughs> so let me double check on that yeah sprinkle one one teaspoon per 25 square feet no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do what it says. So what I did one day is I decided, you know what, I can't deal with this infestation. And this happened a few years back in the beginning of my plan journey. And what I did is I decided to make tea with it. I decided to make tea. So I ended up grabbing saucers, believe it or not, and placed them under all my plants. All my plants. So all my plants ended up beginning to get underwater. That's one the thing that helped me tremendously. I began to dress the top soil. That helps too. But when it came to this, this did it. So what I did is instead of using it by sprinkling it, I just honestly grab like this much, not even a cap full. And I have this specifically for my plants. So I put it there, I fill up two cups of water, and I put it in the microwave for about two minutes. And the water became kind of like, like tea. It, it, it became like a tea. And what I did is I ended up having that solution in my water cans. I would put about two ounces of it in each water can. And I did that over and over and over because I had, I have to fill up my, my tanks about my water cans. I want to say about 16 times <laughs> to be able to water all my plants. So what I did, when I did that, I noticed that I still had the fungus gnats, but within like five days, six days, seven days, they were acting funny. They were like, like kind of slower. They were kind of like stumbling. They were it, like, it, it felt like it got worse before it got better kind of thing. And so I figured, let me try it again. So the following week, I did the same thing. I made the tea. Um, and I kept putting it on my, you know, my water you know, and a couple ounces. Sometimes if the water jug or can is bigger, a little bit more. But I kept doing that solution where I just kept adding water to the little mosquito bits until the water no longer got that film of the solution from the little um, popcorn thing. So by the second week, it was like night and day because it had target the larva. By the third week, it was night and day in my home. And what I do is at least once a month, the plants that do need to get water more often, they do get that solution. And all I do is this has lasted me so long because all I use is a cap, uh, less than a cap full for two ounces and I keep redu using the same little popcorn for at least a couple, a couple fills and then I add more. And then of course I leave the little grains 
in the, the jar. I don't put it with my water. If one or two fall into the jug, that's great, but I don't like having this product in my plants because it's really, it gets fungus very easily. It gets, um, yeah, it just, it, it becomes like, like fungus looking. And so I don't like adding this to my soil, but I do create that tea for it. So between the tea that I make from that and this, oh my gosh, it's like night and day. I don't understand why the creators of the mosquito bits have not, you know, said for someone to do that. I believe that making it like hot, like it just, it, it releases so much of its product. So when the plant gets watered, oh my gosh, like the, the, the larva is getting it, you know? So to me, that it's incredible that it has helped me tremendously. It's something that I highly recommend. And I recommend it even more than, you know, beneficial insects. When I ended up getting the beneficial insects, I felt like it just kind of helped for a month. And another thing that I noticed over time is that if you have at any given moment given your plant any sort of, you know, insecticide or pesticide or whatever the case, there could be some residue in your plant and you are also killing the beneficial insects and they are pricey. So I don't think that they're beneficial. And a prime example was that, you know, some months ago, a ladybug came in and he was a young ladybug and she started eating, you know, from one of my plants, some of the pests, and she didn't last a day. And it made me feel so bad. And it's because of that. When we grab beneficial insects, we're not removing old soil and starting the plant from scratch and removing all that stuff. We're not flushing the plants. We're not mentioned or told to say all these different things to actually help that beneficial insect to help you. So any residue that you have in that soil, it's gonna kill it anyway. And you're back to square one. So to me, you know, if you want beneficial insects, put the plant outside, you know? Beneficial insects will come, but spending X amount of money on things that are not gonna work because of the way you have been caring for your plants, I feel very passionate about not getting them, but that's me. If it works for you, that's great. And what I'm giving here is the advice of what works for me. I also think that, you know, many times we overwater because, and we, we bring these issues to our home because we don't learn truly what our plants need. Many times I have even caught myself. I see that the soil is dry. I put my, for example, I put my, my um, moisture meter all the way down and the soil is super dry at a number one but those leaves of my Hoyas are super thick and hard. So that plant still really could use another day of, or two of not being water, you know? And sometimes I feel like we say, it's, it's the soil is dry, less water. Does the plant truly need water? Or you're just like so accustomed to, to say, okay, dry soil, water the plant. Sometimes it doesn't need it. Another thing is that a lot of people say prayer plants, you know, especially my green maranta, that, you know, it needs to be evenly moist. That plant, if you take it out of the soil, has tuberous roots in a smaller version of what a CC plant would be, way smaller. But it has tuberous roots. If you wait to water until it completely dries, that plant's going to be fine. It might need more humidity but that plant is going to be okay. So that's the one thing that, that you need to do. You need to make sure that one, you don't stress your plants to double check on what really is going to work for you. 
you know, don't be wasting money on things that are just not going to work. If You know, and if you want to use it just to see if it works, fine. You know, like use it, spend the money. But to me, when it comes to most pets, I'm always going to use this one from now on. I've had it forever. For fungus mats, I'm going to make tea. For mealybugs, I'm going to use alcohol. And to clean the leaves, I'm going to use castile soap and neem oil. And that's, you know, and also, of course, I'm going to have my, you know, carnivorous plants everywhere because one, I love them. And two, I, that's another thing. People think they need to be moist 24 seven. But in my opinion, they have to dry in between waterings and just need a lot of freaking light. <laughs> That's how they, not in direct soil because it will burn the leaves, but they do need high lighting and, you know, obviously you don't leave it dry for two days or one day once it's dry water, but people think they need to be like soaked and I don't understand, at least for mine, it doesn't seem like they need that. Um, so I know that I touch a lot here, but I hope that you found this helpful in some way, shape or form. I would hate for you to necessarily buy things that you don't need because maybe someone else said it. I'm going here by what has worked for me. Um, in the past, you know, three years, I have being able to remain home and just listen to my plans, I think that's the biggest thing is you need to listen to your plans. You need to see what they're saying to you and then that way you can better care for them. I hope that if you guys have like a fungus gnat infestation, please make that tea and let me know after a few weeks whether it has worked for you or not and then maintain it. You know, like every you know do it once a month after that and especially to the plants that you have to water constantly i do think that you know the adult ones they do get so attracted to the sticky and i do think it's like they work great for the adult ones but to me they're so unattractive and when company comes i find myself i was finding myself running taking them out because it was so embarrassing. So I don't like them because of that. But, and I can't remember last time I used this. This is probably two years old now because I use, you know, the carnivorous plants and that. So I hope that this video was, you know, helpful. I hope that you forgive me for my pet pets on the background walking around and like scratching and whatever. Um, I was just so excited to go over all these different things with you guys because I do feel like I, I have a good handle on pest control when it comes to my home. And when, let's say I do bring a new plant or whatever, you know, I double check and triple check and try to, you know, of course, keep it separate from the others until I'm able to, you know, be sure that it's safe and many times when i grab new plants i do spray them you know i leave them in the sink for a couple, you know five ten minutes rinse them up and then put them out so i do want to know what you guys use for pest control if you do something different than me for fungus gnats um if you don't and you still battling with them try that please try that you know um water them with that tea <laughs> it's it's incredible it, it really it's incredible and just remember that when you're like you know heating this up for two minutes three minutes depending on how strong your microwave is do not burn your plants put the solution you know whatever the case or even a, a you know a cup into um your watering can and just water them with that and it's Oh, hopefully at room temperature, but it's, it's going to work. I'm telling you at least, at least I'm telling you that it, it works for me because I had an infestation just a few weeks ago. And I think now if I see 
a few around it's a lot so um i don't have to put it this way i don't have to cover my drinks now <laughs> that's so gross to say but i have lost so much food over that because i cannot drink something that has a gnat in it um but anyhow i do want to thank you so much for watching and for just you know sticking around please share this video for with any planty friends that might be struggling with you know pests at this time and until next time guys bye